Hi and welcome. I'm Sue Parker and I'm all about helping you to build a successful career no matter what. So I wanted to create this, this video and a series of, of videos and lives to support you because there is so much change that is going on right now. There are so many things that are being thrown at us that we don't know if we're coming or going in our careers and it can be really difficult to figure out which direction to go in and if you're thinking of pivoting and, and it's just so so uncertain, it's, it's completely unprecedented. So I wanted to create a few videos where we go through practical steps because I'm all about doing things practically practically, uh, as well as addressing whatever else is going on emotionally to, to cope with all these things going on. So I, I don't know, maybe you're on furlough at the moment and you're on a reduced salary and you're, you're struggling to cope at home with your bills. Maybe you, you're enjoying the time at home and you know we've had this great, some of us have had this amazing time to reflect and build more relationships with our families and get closer to our children, although sometimes you might want to throttle them. Um, homeschooling is really Really challenging. Maybe your company is now going through a restructure. You have just learned you're going to be at risk of redundancy. Maybe some of your colleagues or yourself have been in that really the worst possible position where you were made redundant right before lockdown happened and then nobody was hiring. And now you just you just can't see a way out. It's affected your confidence and, and it's just a really, really the crappiest thing to, to have happened. Maybe you're on furlough, you don't know when you'll be returning back to work and you're on this reduced salary. Maybe you've gone back and you've been holding the fort while everybody's been off and you're also on a reduced salary, reduced working hours, but you've been putting in the extra hours and getting noticed maybe. So maybe there are some senior directors and managers in your company who now know who you are because you saved the day so many times. So there are so many different scenarios and I would love for you to share with me on the comments, what, what is your position? What are you going through? How are you dealing with this? What what is it that you're struggling with right now? What is it that I can bring to you? And if I don't know the answers, then we'll find them so that you can deal with whatever change it is that you're going through right now. And I personally have had a period of time where I've managed to spend some quality time with the kids. At times, we've wanted to throttle each other, um, but I've realised that you know you can you realise after a time like this that you want so much more from life. You, you realize there is more to, more to life than what we've been doing because we're so fast paced. And if you work in tech, it's even worse. You are just work, 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 work. And you're just so focused on the routine and getting the kids to nursery or if you've got not got kids, just the, the daily commute and getting into the office and the buzz and the pace and the pressure that it's really sort of difficult or, or it's easy, sorry, to forget all the other things in life that matter. And right Right now we've had time to enjoy this. We've enjoyed, in the UK certainly, we've enjoyed some really beautiful weather and I've, like I say, enjoyed some great time with my family and some time that I wouldn't have had if this hadn't have happened. But then going back to work, even working remotely, literally between two children is really hard and the pressure at work to perform because we're now having to, to drive efficiencies and be leaner and then the impact on restructuring on staff and on your emotions it's really tough and, and all this and, and we've somehow got to comprehend that a virus has literally sideswiped society you know this 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 way of living and way of working for so long that became the norm has just been sideswiped by the fact that there's a vi that there's a virus out there that's so dangerous it's it's killing you know tens of thousands of people hundreds of thousands of people and and it's really dangerous. And we take that for granted. We've taken that for granted for so long. And now, kind of returning back to normal, you know, some of the, 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 the lockdown in the UK has certainly been easing. And that creates a little bit of anxiety. We've got to get out there. There is a lot of pressure in some companies to go back to work sooner rather than later. And obviously kids going back to school and childcare. And all the while, we're hearing about the impact on the economy, the fact that the national debt has gone up, and all these things make you start to worry about your own personal finances. If you have been struggling on, on furlough pay, if you have been struggling because you've had reduced working hours, maybe you're being demoted now and offered a lower position, less pay, and you feel like, hang on a minute, I've, 
I've worked really hard all this time and now my promotion's taken away and I've somehow got to do this more menial job and I'm doing 10 times as much work but for less money and it, it doesn't somehow feel, feel fair. You know, debt and, and the lack of income now affecting our credit score that it can be really difficult to figure out how to cope with that, how to, what to do next, what's the right thing to do because what seems to be the right thing to do one day is all of a sudden going to affect your credit score and be the wrong thing the next day and what seemed like the right thing in your career at one point all of a sudden doesn't feel like that was the right move and, and you're reflecting on these things. So where does it leave us? And on the one hand, you know, we've learned that we don't need certain luxuries. I've certainly learned that I don't need all of these things that we were going to the supermarket every two days to buy. Um, and, you know, all those things when, you, when you're having to supermarket shop for seven to ten days or even longer, you realize that you're, you're just focusing on the essentials to begin with and all the other stuff doesn't matter. Or maybe all the stuff that we went out and spent at the weekend in the shops buying things that we didn't really need and we've now learned that actually the things that matter are our connections and our experiences or maybe you know you're quite looking forward to going to a restaurant and enjoy or enjoying a pint in in the local and these things that we we took for granted and that are no longer you know we're like craving this sort of stuff but on the other hand we know we need to survive we've got bills to pay and we want a really good quality of life so you know I'm okay with I can I can live leaner. I know we can I can deal with less. We didn't need that stuff. Didn't didn't buy all these clothes for months and months and months, and we survived. You know, didn't ha didn't spend excessive amounts of money on things because we weren't able to go out and spend it. But I do want a good quality of life, and 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 you probably feel like that too. That actually, you know, you've reflected and thought, I can do more. I want more. I want to have more. I want to do more. I want to be more successful. I can be because in this time, I've reflected on it and thought. There's so much, I've got so much more to offer and I'm wasting my life. So when, when lockdown eases, I'm going to go and get it and I'm going to go and do this. And then now everybody's sort of talking about, oh, there's not many jobs going and people are scaling back and the economic crisis that's going to follow. So, so how do we figure out what to do? And, and, you know, maybe you actually did a course during this time. You had, you were off and you did a course and I've got a few employees who did that. And, you know, that's, great way of spending your time, really sort of conscientious way of spending your time. Maybe you've raised your profile at work and you've got, you know, like I say, you, you got your profile notice with those bosses. Maybe you updated your CV or your LinkedIn profile and you made some really good use of that time. Or perhaps you have, you know, shied away a bit and, and you've spent so much time with your family, which is absolutely fantastic, but you've kind of missed out on networking opportunities you haven't been to meetups you haven't the, the conferences haven't gone on the same you know there's some virtual conferences that are running but I know I know certainly when I've signed up it's not quite the same um, unless the one way I have not had it working is I've done these zoom groups where we have breakout areas and then we rotate them every 10 minutes so you get to meet five new people and they are the best ways I've found of really getting to know a small group of people but those sorts of events are rare because they take some planning so if you're interested in those drop me an email um, so perhaps you haven't made the, the connections and the opportunities because you've had so much other stuff going on it's just been quite manic certainly in our house now there's lots of change and lots of uncertainty and some uh, companies are now in consult consultation with employees and if you're part of that process then I totally feel for you it's 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 really really upsetting um, that you know the warnings about the economy and I think we just we've just touched on this if you know the rising debt and and all that kind of stuff you, all you hear about is or all I see on LinkedIn is you know there's so many contractors out of work now and you feel grateful if you're in a permanent position you managed you weren't a contractor at that time or a consultant and relying on the fact that we've got to go out and get new contracts all the time or contracts coming to an end because, uh, you know, the first thing that happened when, when COVID lockdown was happening was, let's get rid of all our contract to spend. And, and how do they cope? Being, and how do you, if you are a contractor, then how, how have you managed to do this? What sort of things have you, have, you, have you had to put in place? Maybe being asked to do more for less and on reduced working. So you, what are your options? So you could start a new role. 
but nobody wants to be the sort of last in first out at the moment because if there's going to be any restructuring there's going to be cutbacks you know that you're in a very risky position if you don't know the business really well you aren't really well established you haven't delivered lots then there's kind of not a lot to go in your favor in terms of scoring you job offers are being retracted um i know people who had a job offer right before lockdown and then it got deferred. It was like, well, we're going on lockdown, so we're not going to take you on during this period on like the 6th of April because we've got nobody here to train you and nobody's here to onboard you. So we'll delay your start date. And then eventually the offer got retracted. And if you're in that position and you've managed to get back on with your previous employer, great. If you, if they said, well, you handed your notice in, we're happy to you know, take it as attrition because we haven't got the money to pay you either then that's awful. And and that happened, unfortunately, to a lot of people. And a lot of people just got let go in that period. And that's, you know, really awful. The, the furloughing thing was, was served a really great purpose and really helped businesses and employees out alike. But, you know, when people, when it wasn't taken up by employers, when employers did just get rid of people, you know that really hit hit hard to a lot of pe- a lot of you and if 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 you're one of those people then um you know by all means reach out ask for support and help and tell us you know what will you need whether how you're getting on with your job search and things now in your career and and let's let's go with that um we've got lots of change to manage and through the everyone just takes their own time you know it's really important to accept the fact that when this change is happening human beings do go through a change cycle and I'm not going to give you the the psychology of it but basically there is a period of feeling fear and anxious and that's perfectly normal you know you only have to look around at social media and you can see that this whole thing has made us all quite anxious some of us really anxious about leaving our house without a face mask on some of us really anxious about seeing other family members you have I want you to think about who do you have in your network to support you who is there to listen to your problems your worries and support you and and this is really difficult because those people at home have their own goals you know your partner they they have their own things going on they've got their own worries and their own problems and how do you support each other and how do you do that and sometimes you do need an outside person that you can call on and get support and offload to and 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 also support them that's outside that situation because there it can be quite intense at home there can be a lot going on and that you know everybody has their own goals so you can't you know you almost need that person somebody outside who is okay who's got the bandwidth to support you and and part of what I'm doing here about bringing people together with these networking events is to try and give you a little bit more support to try and bring you more people with more bandwidth that you know and to fill each other up and when we fill each other up we've got more to give and it's you know it modern day life is really hard you know, everything we take on and the pace of change, particularly if you work in, in business or in the technology sector like I do in IT, the pace of change is really rapid. And the fact the pace of life now is far exceeding what it used to. So, and yet our friends and family support has gone down because we don't have time to make loads and loads of friends we don't have time to network and go into the community and always you know and thumbs up to everybody who does do this sort of thing but it's I find it really difficult to go out into the community and offer my time and offer any additional support because I'm so stretched with everything I've already committed to doing and it's not just because of lockdown it's because we've always had such busy lives it's 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 a modern modern day living is just so hectic and so busy and that's just just the way it is and, and we're surrounded all the time and you know T- tony robbins actually talks about this this impact of us having more change less support and the fact that we need coaches to support us for that reason because we're going through so much change in in every aspect of our lives relationships work whatever it is business you know everything and now you know the the whole change of our sort of lifestyle and everything and right now you can be that support to someone else which sounds a little bit crazy because you're probably thinking well if I join one of these supporting groups if I join one of your networking events or if I reach out to somebody, how, you know, for support, how can I also support them? And it, it kind of does sound crazy, but here's, here's how it kind of works. When we share our stories, 
the, the good and the bad and the ugly, when we're sharing what we're doing and what we're going through, everybody realizes they're not alone and they're going through it too. And when, the, when you don't feel alone and you've got somebody else to, who relates to what you're going through, it's amazing how you know that feeling of isolation that means the change is really overwhelming can be lifted slightly. And sometimes, you know, there'll be people who are going through the same thing, but they're at different stages in the change to change curve. They're having different experiences. They're taking different actions. And we can learn from that. We can all get tap in, you know, be, be stronger together. And when we listen to something amazing that somebody has done, in that moment of inspiration, it lifts you up and reminds you of what just is possible. If you just take a different approach, if you have a different mindset, if you do whatever that person is doing, or if you just reach out and comfort each other. That old saying, a problem shared is a problem halved, it, it is actually true. Um, we, you know, we can't do anything from a position of fear. So if we're in this position now, if, the, if this is describing how you are, uh, you know, you're in this, this sort of work quandary, things are happening out of your control to you. And then there's all this negative press about the economy and the job situation and recruiters don't seem to be emailing anything out that's suitable for you. Um, or, you know, pay offers seem to have suddenly like gone down by a heart, you know, a third of less than what they were. We can't do anything if we're in this position of being super scared about what might happen. Because when we're scared, that, that fear um, that stops us from doing something new, from trying something different, and when it feels like everything is out of our control, we need to just focus and hone in on the things that we can control. The Dalai Lama said, Dalai Lama said, not to worry about the things that we can't control and the things that we have solutions for. And that is so true. There are so many of these things that we just talked about. So if, if your company is going through a restructure, if your company is going through, is, is making redundancies and going through consultation, if you're on furlough, if you are, um, work, there's the economic crisis that might come as a result of this and it might affect your industry. If you can't control those things, so, so there are some elements of under consultation and restructuring where you can do certain things to elevate your position. And, you know, I've got some great videos on that, actually. You, you can definitely do some stuff on that. Um, but if you are in a position where there are certain things you cannot control, then don't worry about them. That let's focus and hone in on, all right then, so I can't do anything about an economic downturn, but I can look at my skill set and figure out how can I use my transferable skills, pivot and apply it in a different way. What are the sorts of jobs that are on offer? What are the sorts of industries that are booming? Do I just need to increase my commute slightly? Which goes really against the grain of saying that, to be honest, because you've probably just had however many, two months working from home or, you know, not working working at all so to all of a sudden go to a commute when you'd already decided mentally over this period I hate my commute and I didn't need to do it is is, is one of those sorts of things but that's not to say flexible working and all those things aren't going to become the norm you know employers organizations have had to adapt they've got new technologies new ways of working it will start to be more and more acceptable it has to be as a result of what we've what we've gone through but what I want to say is just allow yourself to feel upset Allow yourself to be angry and all that other stuff, all that other emotion that comes with hearing that there's going to be a change, there's going to be an upset and things are not, you know, not quite what we do. We, we have to deal with that change. We have to, we have to allow ourselves as human beings to feel those emotions and not bottle them up and not let them damage us in a way that we're, when we're trying to move forward. Because we are going to get through this. We are all going to get through this and we are going to focus on what we can do and what positives and we're going to focus on what is amazing about us. And in years to come, we will have been, you know, pushing forward and we'll still get to where we want to be. And this will have been a really funny year and some of us um, will, you know, will rise this year and some of us will, st will stay quite at the same level and some of us um, 
we'll have a longer period of getting used to that change and, and, and figuring out where we should be. And, and we just need to support each other on that. So many people experience this and still build successful careers. So there are so many stories of people who have had rejection and who've gone through you know, multiple redundancies and then come out with CIO roles, Chief Information Officer roles. So it is, it, it's not to say that that's anything to do with it. And it's also not to say that that is a rejection of you or your, your worth. You know, the, but what we can do is try to show your value as much as possible. We're going to get through this time. So, but what we're going to do is, so the first thing, I want to be, I'll go back to practical, sorry, I had to read my notes then because I've, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent, I think. So the first thing we may need to do is make sure we come from a position of strength, not fear. And in that strong position, um, A, we can do anything because we believe in ourselves, but also no one is going to believe in us if we don't believe in ourselves. So when we're positioning ourselves in any conversation in the workplace at all, any interview, any discussion with a recruiter, if we don't come from a really strong position of uh, confidence, you know, I believe I can do this. And if I, I believe I can do this, that comes across when I'm talking to you. And if I don't believe I can do this, that also comes across. And you, you know, you, you, People get underwhelmed by you. You want people to feel overwhelmed by how confident you are that you can definitely do this. And so as a result, we need to, to build you up. And we need to remind ourselves and everyone else what our strengths are. And the first action we're going to take is to remind ourselves of our worth. Remind ourselves of all of achievements and all the amazing things that we can do. And I want to share a powerful tool that is used in career coaching. Um, across the board, executive career coaches, top career coaches use this to help you recognize what I call your superpowers. Recognizing your superpowers, feeling like superwoman or superman. And, and there are a few techniques and what I want to share with you is one of the best. So here is where we're going to trace back to the start of your career. So there is a link to a download somewhere on the bottom of this video that you can get. And I'll walk you through that. In fact, I will flip that on the screen now and we share that. So here's where we're going to trace back to the beginning of your career, the start of your career. And if you want, you can just focus on the last six to 12 months of your career. So here's what you're going to do. You're really going to spend some time doing this activity. One of the most important things is understanding, recognizing your value and believing in it. And we can't do that when we just kind of skim the surface of, well, I went to this university, then I did this. You need to get a bit deeper. You need to really think about the projects you worked on and put yourself Take yourself back in time. And I, so we're going to go back through your career timeline. So starting from when you ver, very first started your career and what degree you did and what kind of projects did you do? What kind of work experience did you did, do? I remember one of the most incredible experiences I had, even now, one of my most incredible and rewarding achievements was definitely some work experience at Buxton College. And I worked with a lady called Ruth and she was just an incredible, Incredible mentor and she I remember one day she just told me she thought I was a better lecturer than she was and and you know from that point on I had this amazing confidence that I could do this this is great and she, you know it's an incredible thing to have been told that and so they were so pleased with me they offered me a contract as a sessional lecturer whilst I continued my degree. And, you know, there's not many not many times you would get something like that pop up. You know, there's not many people who would reach out and, and give you that step up. And, and there's not many times in your career you have those sorts of achievements, I don't think, to, to pick from. So think back to everything you did, but think about that detailed achievement. It's not just, I got my 2-1 computer science degree. It's, so what else happened during that period? So right from the beginning of your career, what are your achievements? What do you learn? How did you grow? How did you develop? So over your career, have you learned to project manage? Have you learned a particular type of project management? Are you in data engineering? Have you learned to work with other trades? Have you learned to work cross-departmentally with stakeholders, with clients? Have you account managed? What did you do? What did you achieve? Maybe you turned something around. Maybe you introduced some new process that was transformational to something. Maybe you've achieved some particular targets. What did you do that stand out that, you know, was your contribution? And some of these things will be a team contribution, but without you fundamentally part of that team, you wouldn't have done it. 
I also want you to really think now about the things you hated because we don't want to do a lot more of that. You know, the, if we're going to move forward in our career, we could do with knowing the things we particularly don't like doing. And when, you, when you're aware of that, you can avoid them. What you really want to know is also the things you like, the things you love doing. So figuring out what you like and what you love. And I know now when I go and deliver a presentation or, you know, I'm delivering a new product, I love presenting it. I love standing there and showing somebody how my corporate dashboard works or whatever. So what common themes have you got coming through there? Are you, a, you know, particularly leaning towards creative um, side of things? Are you leaning towards, you know, problem solving? Are you really good at the investigative analysis? To, use, to coin a better phrase, investigative analysis. What are the key things that are standing out there? You're going to take some time doing this. It's going to take you a lot of thinking about it. I want you to go through each one of your courses, your jobs that you did, people you work with, even things that weren't necessarily employment, so volunteering, anything like that. I want you to think in great detail, what are the themes that stand out to you? What did you do? What did you learn, grow, develop? What did you like? What did you hate? What did you achieve? And I want you to write them down. Use this career timeline if you like. Use a table if you prefer. Whatever sort of format you can use. Brainstorm it however you like so that you know all the incredible things that you've achieved. Because to get to here, whatever is happening right now, you've had an incredible experience. You have got such unique value to offer because only you have the experience that you do. And what you want to do is draw from that and use it moving forward. So really spend some time deep delving into your career, what you loved, all those sorts of things. And think about what you want to do more of, what you want to do less of. And then on the next sheet, what I've actually done is um, the next activity, which you can start now if you like, is your top 20 facts. Um, when you've done your career timeline, this, this career timeline, you will find it a lot easier to do 20 facts about you. And I'm not talking about your shoe size or are you married or whatever. I'm talking about 20 amazing, incredible facts that we forget everything we've done. We forget the presentations we've delivered. We forget the events that we went to and took part in and led. We forget all the incredible people we've worked with over the years because we are moving so fast. It just gets stuck back in our memories somewhere in our, in our stockpile. I want you to come out of this feeling an incredible sense of pride and of everything that you've done and everything that you've achieved and know that you have an incredible value to offer. You And I want you to know that regardless of whatever is happening now, you can come out of this in a really strong position. You can come out of this and move forward. You are a skilled and talented person. You need the right mindset, the right positioning, the growth mindset, and whatever you don't know now, you can learn, and we will figure out what those things are. So, so I hope that you've had a lot of value from joining me today. I want you to stay with me, stay tuned, subscribe, and through these, these videos, we'll have, go through a process of making sure that no matter what your career is currently throwing at you, no matter what your organization or life around us is throwing us at us, we're getting in a stronger and stronger position to be able to still build an in incredibly successful career that you deserve of to reach your potential. Take care, stay safe, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.